uh, Mr. Swaroop, Mr. Christie, uh, guests. I've uh, titled my presentation Education in a Changing World because uh, that's what we all are facing today. Um, we are a world in transformation. There's a growing world market. We're facing global scale, global competition. Knowledge is becoming the new currency, or as now people understand, data is the new oil, right? And there's a demographic shift. Uh, India, as you all know, has a demographic dividend, and the, the question that we want to answer is that will this dividend be leveraged, or will it become a millstone around our necks? More importantly, we need to understand that the demand for skills has changed. This is slightly a dated slide, but the concept still remains the same. If you really look at it, the routine manual activities or skills that we used to acquire have gone down over time. What has increased is the non-routine interactive skills, the requirement for that. And I'll come to what those skills are. The dilemma of schools or education institutions globally is that unfortunately the skills which we can easily teach and test are those which are actually going down in terms of the requirements. And the ones that we can't teach and test, or we feel we can't teach and test, are the ones which are required. And we'll come to what those are. These are some of the skills which have been defined you know, as the skills of the future. Whether you talk about design mindset, cross-cultural abilities, collaboration, new media literacy, virtual collaboration, cognitive load management, sense making, etc. More importantly, I think what from a from a student's perspective, it is what you call those 21st century skills of problem solving, analytics, synthesis of information which become critical. And the bottom line is interdisciplinary learning and adaptability is going to be the key. And our learning spaces, our learning ecosystem needs to be redefined for, to address that. Why? Because the jobs, the jobs of the future have not been created. Just to give you an idea, the top 10 jobs which LinkedIn, uh, one of the largest uh, portals in the world, which is a professional portal, had on its list in 2016 never really actually existed 10 years ago. So we are teaching our children and our students today for jobs which we don't know what they are about. And hence, if we don't know what those jobs are, what are we going to teach them? We have to build those skills which will make them adaptable. We'll have to make those skills, give them those skills which will make them change in that changing world. And technology, fortunately or unfortunately, is disrupting skills is also disrupting the way jobs are today. The, the question is, do we take advantage of that technology or do we take look at technology as a barrier to all of this? So, are our students ready for the new global economy in a digitized world where you have diverse workforce needs, you have new aspirations? Are we creating the educated unemployed or the employable educated. The key is how we educate our children. And to go to that, I'll go back to three principles that exist for all humans. We are all diverse, we are all creative, we are all curious. Unfortunately, our systems today require us to be compliant, standardized, and constrained. The role of education should not be to create a climate of, uh, of control, but a climate of possibilities for students. Make them explore. Make them understand what will happen. Make them question. The shift in the model learning paradigm are also changing. It's moving from me to we, collaborative learning. We all work in a collaborative environment today. It's moving from dependency on the teacher or the faculty alone to myself, self-learning, lifelong learning. And it's moving from 
the known to the unknown. So it's no longer important. It's important, but it's no longer really important for me to remember how, what is the percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. What is important for me to figure out is what will happen if that percentage goes up and down. It's no longer important for me to remember possibly, right, and I know I'm sitting in the midst of educationists and I may be uttering some very blaspheming words, but it's possibly no longer important to learn the birth date and the death, death date of a, a, a king or a sultan or an, a conqueror in the past in history. But what's important is possibly to understand why did that emperor look at conquering? Why did the East India Company, how was it that the East India Company expanded in India, not the dates, but expanded in India by moving from just becoming a trading organization to some, an organization which ultimately ruled the country? How did that happen? So, the model learning paradigm is also shifting. What that means, we need to innovate. Technology today, as I say, gives us that opportunity to innovate. We can use technology innovation to architect educational innovation. Whether we create student center experiences, whether we provide a platform for innovation in terms of the way the school ecosystem interacts with the students and the parents and the teachers, and making it flexible because today education is no longer going to happen just within the four walls of the school or the classroom. Education will happen everywhere, every time. Anytime, anywhere learning is actually a fact, it's actually a truth. And hence, when we look at transformation, what are we looking at? Four key areas, transforming your curricular interface. Transforming the way the curriculum is, gets rendered into the student. Transforming the way the cu curriculum gets updated. Enabling scale and redefining processes. When I'm talking about scale, we have such a huge population of students across the country or across the globe. We need to reach out to them so that they get the best possible education which they require to learn. And when I'm looking at redefining processes, I'm going to sort of tweak a little bit over here. Look at what some, some of the thoughts of what value technology can bring. If we start looking at leveraging the use of artificial intelligence to identify what's happening to students and why are they scoring the way they are scoring in particular classrooms or particular geographies, will it not be possible to then provide focused interventions, not just for groups of students, but possibly individual students, so individualized learning. And that is possible today. Empower the faculty so that the faculty is, doesn't spend time just providing lectures, but you spend time with the student. And enable your students. Enable your students to become problem solvers. Enable your students to look at collaborative learning. Enable them to look at interdisciplinary positions. So the new pillars in education become creating and sharing entirely in new ways, teaching and learning through doing and exploring rather than rote memorization, accommodating any learning style. And why am I saying any learning style? Because every student is different. Everyone would be challenged at any point of time with a different problem. And you need to accommodate that. And focus on outcomes, not technology. I come from a technology company. I've been in, a technology, in technology for the last 15, 20 years. My earnest request to educators is do not focus on technology for the sake of technology. It doesn't work. Focus on the learning outcomes that we want to drive and then how technology can fit in, not the other way around. So from a system change, we're looking at 
learning environments, where and how and when will students learn, teaching and learning assessment, how do we assess our students, how do we teach them. You change the assessment practice, you will change the way students learn. You will change what the students learn and what the students can buy. Building capacities both in the teachers as well as in, in our leaderships, in our principals, to be able to accommodate to this changing educational environment and building a culture of innovation. For the clear goal that we need to ensure we don't leave anyone behind. That is the goal as far as education is concerned. We must ensure we don't leave anyone behind. And I would like to, at this point, put one very important aspect when we say we don't leave anyone behind. We should not forget those children who are left behind because of disabilities. We cannot afford to leave them behind. We need to create inclusive classrooms. We need to use technology to help make them learn because they can learn. Everyone will be disabled for a reason or the other at any point of time. I am disabled today because I can't see without my glasses. I could be situationally disabled at a point of time if I'm carrying a bag and a book on the, in the other hand and I have to open a door. Or I could be disabled because I have a disformity of my leg or my hand. These are all situations. Look at these students not because of what they don't have, but because of what they have. Thank you very much.